In an ancient statement of faith, the one still universally recognized throughout Christianity, the believer professes, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The Orthodox Church today understands herself to be uniquely this church confessed in the Nicene Creed. She is one, for she continues to manifest the unity of one faith, one Lord, one baptism in her life, in her worship, and in her teaching. She is holy, for the scriptures testify that it is God who is glorified in his saints. It is God's glory, God's holiness that belongs only to him, his divine life that flows into the members of the church and thus manifests his holiness. She is Catholic, which means fullness or wholeness. For on the day of Pentecost, the fullness of the divine revelation was given to the apostolic community. And though the church in every generation has continued to express that divine revelation in new words, in new circumstances to new peoples, in her efforts to evangelize the nations, there is no new revelation. There is nothing that can be added to that fullness that was given on the day of Pentecost. And finally, she is apostolic where she continues to preach the same gospel that the Lord entrusted to the apostles to be preached and taught beginning in Jerusalem throughout the ends of the world. As we read in Holy Scripture, Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. This is the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is not a Bible-based church. If by this we mean a faith community that has used the Bible and their own particular interpretation of the scriptures to try to reconstruct the teaching and worship of the early church. And this may be one of the biggest differences in orientation between the Orthodox Church and many Christian communities today, communities that are filled with wonderful and devoted and Christ-loving people. The Orthodox Church does hold Holy Scripture in very high regard, believing it to be the divinely inspired word of God and holding it as her greatest treasure. But she has never used it in a way unintended by the scriptures themselves in order to reverse engineer the life of the apostolic church that has somehow been lost or interrupted. The Orthodox Church is connected to the early church, to the apostolic community, not in an abstract and ideological way as claimed by many Christian communities today, but uniquely in a direct, concrete, historical, uninterrupted, unchanging, and living way. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, the faith of Jesus Christ passed down to the apostles and to their followers has been passed down to us to this very day whole and complete, without adding or subtracting anything. And if we go to those places that we read of in the Bible, those earliest Christian communities, the recipients of the apostles' preaching and discipleship, we'll find that the earliest Christian communities, the indigenous Christian communities in those places, in the Holy Land and throughout the surrounding regions, are to this day Orthodox Christians. This is a bold claim, but it is not made in pride or in any sense of personal virtue, but rather with faith and trust in the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read these words. 
and I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, which the early Christian teachers understood to be Peter's previous confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we read these words. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take of mine and declare it to you. The faith of our Lord Jesus Christ delivered to the apostles and to their successors down to this very day has been given to us unchanged, whole, pure, and pristine, not by our own virtue, but by the goodwill of the everlasting Father, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and by the power of the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. In our next video, we'll look at different images of the church and focus on one particular image and also a word of discernment that the Lord gives us to test whether this bold claim is true.